culture, but when he comes in, when he comes in, there's no more movement. Hello, somebody. The most you can do is just, just wave that hand. Most women that, that don't have a real high crazy praise like some of the other uh, 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 people that don't sit when the presence comes, they, they, they just cry. They just, they just tear just come down. And, and, and while you over there doing this, they're just crying. And it's the same significance as if they were breaking down in a praise. But I understand the tears more than the praise. Because the praise in his presence means you're being chastised. Yes, you are. Your behavior is telling on you. 
you, you, can't, you can't even get your words out. Like, you don't even know how to go into some swearing and cussing. <laughs> you can't even enter into that piece. It's going to take you a long time to get out the simplest swear. Because you've been in his presence. And he will allow you to swear by heaven or by earth. So you already let us know that you've been in his presence. And some of us don't go to get into his presence until it's time to go to service. Oh, and then you... Uh-huh. And then you come in here, you want to try to act like you've been with, been with him. You ain't been with him. You ain't been with him. Listen, listen, verse 6. And I, I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get to my point. And, and then he says, he said, verse 6, and then, then flew one of the, the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tone, with the tone from off the altar. Notice something. Now, you got to understand this, because most people that read that get it twisted, or they get it, they mistake what they're reading. To think that the cold had the power to purge his tongue. The cold by itself could not do anything. And, and, and notice something. He didn't bring cold from in this realm. So with, with a moment, a flash of light, he went to the altar of heaven. And retrieved, oh my God, some coal from the altar that's around heaven. And instantly, he's at the prophet's mouth. Because he says, before you can speak on behalf of God, your mouth's got to be clean. Oh, people talk about the mouth sometimes. The mouth has to be clean to the point that you don't speak all the time. You ain't quick to give a person a word. The prophets today, they quick on oh, the Lord. Come on, God ain't talked to some of these prophets for months and years. You get a word every night. You, 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 you gotta understand. You ain't gonna walk without 
are sorry. Not in the prophetic. You will go through some people to turn on you. People that you broke bread with will then turn on you because you see the honor where they are and they can't have you see any better than them. And they want it all free, but yours seem like you gotta pay for it. And then when you get it, they laugh and talk each other like you gotta eat legally. <laughs> no, I went through the cycle, the process of heaven, and heaven has allowed me to suffer. And I suffered for a while. The Bible says that if you suffer for a while, after a while, God will come in and strengthen you. Don't get mad, touch three people. Don't get mad when my strength comes. <laughs> Because you can't catch an attitude. The flesh of me, not 
serious timing on me. So once you get touched by the hand of God, you, you, you got to listen. It's a lonely place being a prophet. You have a whole family, but you still walk by yourself. You can speak to the man for the person, but you still by yourself. Oh my God. We're going through all types of nights. Times of the night just to talk to you. It's not that you don't love your mate, it's just that when you talk, I can't hear my mate. Because if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, it would have said. So when your mouth has been touched from the cold of heaven, that means it, something you was definitely about to change. You, 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 listen, God, listen now. You, you, you could have been in the streets and came from the hood and had a vocabulary that was off the chain. But when God touches your mouth, there's just some things that ain't going to come out. And the only way it will come out is if you hit a spiritual low. And that's usually close to depression. A spiritual depression is different than a natural depression. In the natural depression, they put you on medication. A spiritual depression, then you just got to wait on God and shut up. And you got to trust him. You, you be like, God, I feel like throwing in the towel. So we going to throw that. The earth is mine. Everything is mine. We, I, you're not going to throw nothing on the floor that I give you. Oh, y'all ain't ready. Y'all was already in the Revelation stage. Uh, so, so, verse 7, this is the next verse. I like verse 7 because verse 7 represents me. So, and he said, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, No, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Can I drop that on you? The moment God begins to touch you in that form, I don't care what nobody thinks about you. Okay. They cannot penalize you. Because he has justified you. Yeah. 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 See, a lot of people ask, how is it that you can go through so much and still come to church to preach? Because I know I've been touched. Yeah. Yeah. I know I've been touched. And see, my assignment is stronger than my diplomacy. I mean, or what I've been through. Or what I, I've come across. Or what I have to entertain or be intrigued by. My, my assignment has so much advanced beyond what I can even go through in the natural. Some of y'all don't know how to separate the natural from the spirit. Just like in the natural, you don't know how to separate from church from state. Just like you don't know how to separate state from government. You don't know how to separate local establishment from state establishment. You don't know how to separate your lover from... Uh, yes, yes, because this is why, uh, can I keep going? This is why, because most of y'all, once you get a man or get a maid, you abandon the presence of God. But it's only until you start to have chaos in your relationship that you go back to the altar. Why not just stay at the altar and bring him with you? Uh, and if you're single, learn to be single and don't mingle. Isaiah, I, 
Here I am, send me. Notice something. God is not into sending people forth that haven't been clean. He's sick of people operating up here and you're dirty. I'm so, I'm so happy I can be transparent. Every time I make a mistake, if you notice anything about me, if I'm going through something, I ain't preaching. I'm not touching nothing over. Y'all look great. I thought y'all were great. Because why? Because I don't want to contaminate what he's about to do. So in between my stumbling or my failing, there's a place called the altar. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. And it's amazing because when I go to the altar, he's always there. Yes. You don't never forsake the altar. He's always there as if he had already written in my contract that I would go through these things. Y'all don't want it like that. Because he chose me before the foundation of the earth. He already wrote out my life expectancy. And then he comes all the way back to help me walk through what he's already yeah. born for me. So some of y'all are tripping because you're like, why am I going through this? Because it was written in your contract. Your husband was going to act up. Your wife was going to leave. Your kids was going to smoke weed. Your daughter was going to step out. Right. 
I don't, they're not going to take it into their heart. They're not going to be converted. No matter how many times you tell them, listen, stop that, do this, get on the altar, build a relationship, get back in your word. No matter how long you tell them, the Bible says they're not going to do it. He's telling the prophet, before you go forth with your word, when you give them this word, they're not going to listen. And isn't it amazing he still goes forth? Because the refused prophetic words put you in straight judgment. Yes. Yes. See, to refuse a, a, a apostolic a, a word or an apostle, pastor, preacher, evangelist, teacher word, all the Bible says for us to do is shake the dust off us and keep it moving. Yeah. But when a prophetic word comes, life and death, hope is out in the balance of it. If you don't hear it, then you're going to face problems. So you look around at some of the people you see in ministry, and you wonder why they go through so much because they didn't receive of that word. When God gave them something that was vital, they did not hear it. They prayed with it. They said, oh, they always give the word. Every time I turn around, somebody prophesy. But you don't know when God's really going to drop it in the house. Amen. So all I know is you have to be in a position to catch it. Can I drop down and finish this? It says in verse 13, he says, he says, but yet in it shall be a tip, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a, a till tree, and as an oak, which substance is in within when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Notice what he says. He says, in the midst of everybody not receiving and rejecting and not operating in the things that I've given you to say to them, he said, there's going to be a tithe of the people that will hear you. And even though you're around all these mighty substances, the oak tree, even though you're around all these people that appear to be giants, the only real holy seed is going to come forth is those that listen. So here goes the assignment of the prophet. Go to a people that ain't going to listen to you and prophesy. Walk in a church and declare a word even though they're not going to hear it. Go to your family and tell your family the gods that I serve said you better get right or some of y'all gonna be leaving here. They're not gonna hear. Go to them jacked up relationships and tell them y'all need to just break apart before something happens bad. They ain't gonna hear you. Tell them about holiness and sanctification. They're not going to hear. It. Tell them you keep smoking, you're gonna get cancer. They're not going to hear it. But in the midst of it, you're going to have a bunch that say, we're listening. Yes. And the prosperity is going to rest on them. And though they did not listen, you're going to see them start to decay. <laughs> and as they decay, notice, there was no remedy for their decay. Mm -hmm. <sighs> see, God says, yeah, I'm shifting my house now. My presence is about to come in here because I've overweighted you. Yes. Hello, somebody. Yes. I'm not waiting on you to get in position no more. Right. I'm going to put you. Yes. I'm going to chasten you. I'm going to stop your progression. Yes. I'm going to end your harvest. I'm going to send the locusts to your house. And they're going to eat up your harvest because you don't want to listen. You would rather be entertained than change. And God says, I'm not a performer. I'm not here for entertainment. Because the word don't make me happy. Because it cuts like a knife. Hello, somebody. And if Ezekiel was here, he would tell you, don't play with the word. Because what I tell you, believe me, is from God. Because if I don't tell you, God don't get me. And I'm not going to have your blood on my hands for not telling you to change what you're doing. Right. It's amazing how that so many people all over the country is just shouting in church. And ain't never had a real experience. Mm -hmm. In our local church, we ordain our priests like a king. But treat them like a peasant. 
We say there's nobody like my shepherd. My shepherd got a gift. But then you'll turn around and can't find you when it's time to see. Amen. Here it comes. What happens now when God says, now I'm calling you. I'm calling you to a place you've never been before. Because the servitude you presented throughout your life span is now the treatment that you will receive now that you are in office. This was so amazing. And I was like, oh my God, I said, the past week and a half, I've been hardly able to walk. Now tonight, I just feel like I want to dance. <laughs> Hello, somebody. And it only started bothering me until I get ready to come to the church. It only started bothering me. Now tonight, I'll be sitting home, and, and then I'm, I'm in pain again. That's if the enemy says your flesh belongs to me. God can have your spirit, but I'll take your flesh. That's why the flesh can't go to glory. It stays here to the God of Israel. Y'all ain't rich. Hello, somebody. So I, I, I declare that though you see me. Uh, see, that, that, was a, that was a sound I heard right there. Uh, that was a sound. I heard a little sound right there. Just a little sound. I think it was a little, yeah, a little louder than that. Like, uh, a little bit more. Just went up maybe louder than that. Yeah, that, that sound. I heard that sound. And though you see me, you know what I heard. I did not get it. Uh, so you got to get to a place where nothing matters no more but what God says. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. So this is the breaking of the ice tonight. So this is the cold being added to the lips tonight. So that on tomorrow you can receive without any issues. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Come on, rest on your feet. I told you, I get you out of here. This is my sister.